chapter 401, we are now into the timber frame. So a little bit of timber frame uh, to put on here. Uh, we'll be putting the uh, bits of timber that make up the door and window openings as well. Uh, so it's quite a simple one, this. So if we come down to our six by two, oh, we haven't got it here because we haven't got the chapter four components loaded yet. So click on the details button, open or create a local collection. And then in the chapter four folder, you'll find the chapter four components. Just select that folder and then that will load these in. Okay, so come back down to six by two inch wall stud, click on that and we'll drop this into position. So that's gonna sit uh, nicely there. Now I've decided to group uh, the mineral wool because we're gonna use uh, mineral wool in here. It doesn't affect or get affected by moisture, which is pretty good. It's fireproof as well. So it's a very useful piece of insulation. It's not as good as uh, some of the other sort of more less organic ones, but uh, it is um, made of mineral. So it's fairly good for the environment as well. Uh, okay, so now we've put that in. Okay, so that goes into the top. We've got some studs and some extra pieces to go in here. So now I can copy this. So from this bottom uh, insertion point with the move tool, tap the control key or the alt option if you are using the Mac and then set that. And then instead of going step uh, times two, we'll just copy the same thing to that point. Now we are looking for the horizontal stud. This one here, six by two horizontal uh, wall stud. And that should drop in at that point. And then I'm just gonna sort of copy them into the various positions. So using the move tool, tap in the control key as I go. And then we'll get these finished in no time at all. Just in case they're not exactly in the right position. Okay. Right, so that's the bit of insulation done. Um, we have got then double studs and things to put in. I think that's going in the next uh, exercise. And we've got a wall plate that goes on top as well. Also some uh, things called cripple studs, which go above um, the door, in between the door and the window. Okay, so we'll end that one at this point, nice and simple, but we are moving forward. In reality, it would probably take a little bit longer to uh, do this, but uh, not too uh, not too long to set up a timber stud wall. Chapter 402, timber frame window and door openings. So they are coming in uh, here. Uh, so we've got a few bits and pieces uh, to put in here. Again, I've made them all, so hopefully they'll all fit together. So we'll come down first and find the double stud for opening. Okay, this one here. So we grab that and then drop that in at the bottom. It should uh, have an origin point of this corner, so that should snap in nicely to there. Just make sure it's nice and snug. Now, what we can do is get rid of this bolt because this sole plate is coming up to here. So double click and then use the push pull. That's uh, this tool. Click and sort of offer it up to the face and then that'll line through nicely. Okay, so that's the opening set. Now we've got the space, uh, spaces left out for the door header. And I've assumed three bits of stress grade timber would do the job. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, you might wanna consult a structural engineer when you've got uh, quite decent sized openings uh, to see whether they this would be sufficient. Obviously these would be bolted together as well to add a little bit more stiffness. Uh, but that should do the job but uh, I am not a structural engineer, so obviously check all these things uh, beforehand. Now we come down to the windowsill stud, and that's two bits of timber, which have then just gone into there. Now I've already placed one of the cripple studs as part of uh, this um, unit. So we've got a few more to pop in, but we'll put the insulation in first, this mineral wool insulation. And if I just copy that across, to there, and then find the cripple stud, this thing here, and drop that in at this point. Hopefully when I copy them, uh, everything should be fine. So I'm just gonna select these two. So control to add the selection, alt option on the Mac, then the move tool, 
we know the drill by now, just tap the control key or the alt option on the Mac, copy it to this position and then start to enter. That should take us up to the edge. Okay, so slightly off, but uh, no one's gonna shout at us for that. So there you go, we've got these bits in. So this has now formed part of our door opening and the window opening is gonna be closed off at the top with the roof, uh, but we just need to find the wall plate. So six by two wall plate, drop that at that point, and then we'll copy this up to there. Okay, this is kind of the header piece, and then this is the wall plate on top. And there you go. So now we've got everything set to start adding some internal and external uh, boards. That'll again give it even more stiffness and we'll be looking at sort of things like vapor barriers, etc. later on as well. Okay, so for now, it's starting to take shape. Chapter 403, internal layers and membranes. So we're gonna look at the inside. Uh, we've got uh, a vapor barrier to put in, and we've got some drywall in here as well. So the vapor barrier uh, is going in because it's uh, set in a cold climate. There's massive debates on the internet. Better products are being made all the time. I think Sika is really good at generating sort of these new style of products which uh, prevent moisture from penetrating through the skin but allow the building to breathe so it's and you know, the pores are getting finer and finer for these sorts of things on the outside we'll end up putting a moisture barrier which is pretty much like a Gore-Tex jacket in which it allows moisture to pass through but stops the bigger water droplets um, from uh, penetrating into the cavities okay so on the inside let's go and find our vapor barrier so vapor barrier internal let's pick that up and then this is coming in to this bottom corner here okay so let's go right down and there you go it's about half a mil thick probably thinner than that in reality it's like a thickish piece of paper in reality with a bit of text written all over it selling the uh, company's name so that's going in like so and then we have our internal drywall this thing here okay so that's going to pop in so near it if I come down to this bottom corner here and attach it just to there that should do it uh, then it steps back at this point and it steps up at this point as well. So let's just check the underside of that. It should line up with the underside. So I'll just move that up to there. That should be fine. The reason it's sitting up uh, at this point is because the window will have um, packers and stuff. So we wouldn't always put the window flush. You need a little bit of tolerance around these openings, even though they are sort of timber openings and can be set to higher tolerances than brickwork. Uh, we still want to put some packers underneath and then our vapor barrier will come up and usually tuck in at this point and possibly the moisture barrier on the outside will tuck in as well and what that's going to do is give much much better uh, sealing properties and stop any drafts coming through okay so all sorts of little tricks and uh, things that you know people or competent installers of these things will do especially when you get to passive house levels air penetration is kept to an absolute minimum uh, to allow that passive standard to exist. Okay, so there you go. That's our internal stuff done. There will be more. We've got some uh, render to go on to this stuff as well. Uh, we'll concentrate on the outside in the next video. Chapter 404, we are looking at the external layers and membranes uh, in this uh, video. Uh, the external layers are gonna be consisted of the rain screen ultimately on top and some render. Uh, but that's going to be applied over uh, a membrane, so a moisture barrier or a breather membrane or building paper, as it's sometimes referred. And also we've got some OSB, which is oriented strand board. OK, so strands of timber uh, glued and pressed together. This one is going to be the external grade quality. Uh, and then on top of that goes the membrane. Then over that then goes all the other finishes. OK, but that's then going to sort of watertight our uh, framing. So if we come down to the chapter four components, we are looking for external OSB uh, sheathing, external wall OSB sheathing, and just drop it into place. And then the easiest way to position it is up in this top corner. And let's just drop that if we can 
onto that corner there. So this time it's calling for the X-ray mode just to drop it into place. Sometimes you just have to orientate yourself around a little bit to uh, find the coincident point, but it's uh, that point there. That's then going to drop that one in. And the similar point for our external moisture barrier. Okay, ultimately this will be covered in uh, text uh, proclaiming the manufacturer. Uh, that'll come when we put the, um, the materials on all of this. And again, just sit that on the outside face of the OSB. And that wraps around under there, uh, around this window opening and around the door opening. Okay, so we're getting a slightly better seal. It's not, again, going to be as neat in reality, but uh, this is how uh, these layers are built up. So there you go. So we've kind of got a weatherproof uh, framing system. Uh, obviously, you might be putting sheets of polythene over the window openings or put the windows in and protect them sort of early doors. Um, but that's where we are at the moment. Now, the next logical step would be to put the roof uh, joists in and they're coming down this way. So we're not on the gutter side here, uh, but I'm moving into the windows and doors fittings in the next chapter so we can get on and finish off sort of this wall on the outside at least. Okay.